perhaps um, we, you can elaborate more about what um, this principle actually is and what it means when um, philosophers are talking about this principle of sufficient reason. Yeah, that's a good question. So when I think of the principle of sufficient reason, Josh, what I'm thinking is that like every contingent fact has an explanation for its existence. So when we're looking at things like um, the existence of like glass of water or um, shirts or like us or whatever, um, if we can think that there's things that are contingent, so whatever your definition is, like, for example, I'll say a contingent thing is something that's like dependent um, or something that could have failed to exist, just two different options there. I'm going to say all those things have some sort of explanation for their existence. So if there's something that could have been different, um, there's an explanation for why it exists. If we look at like the possibility of like me not existing, well, there's an explanation for why I exist. If looking at the explanation of like um, why Christian Pulisic is stuck at Chelsea, um, there's an explanation <laughs> of like the coaches suck there, and that's why I don't like Chelsea anymore. Um, like we get, like we can have like when we look at contingent facts, like there is explanations for like well, why they exist, um, and that's generally the principle of sufficient reason is just like looking for an explanation of something. Now, some people seem to, like, traditionally, of course, people seem to have, um, when they're approached with the Kalam cosmological argument or a contingency argument, perhaps more so the Kalam, I've noticed that in the past, they've, they've been more focusing on perhaps the idea that the past could be infinite, and that would in some ways defeat the Kalam cosmological argument. But how, however, recently, there seems to be more literature kind of trying to object to the first premise of the pr principle of sufficient reason. And of course, it all kind of traditionally, it was kind of Hume, which was seen to kind of argue against the principle of causation to some degree and uh, argue for some sense of constant conjunction instead. So how, how would you kind of describe the potential objections that people may have to the principle of, um, cause of causation or principle of sufficient reason when people are using the cosmological arguments? What are some things that could commonly be heard? Like common things I've heard an objection to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, people have pointed to different things like, um, especially like science, like looking at things like radioactive decay or quantum indeterminacy and saying like, hey, there's indeterministic things that happen in science. How does that fit with like, the, like a principle of sufficient reason? That's probably the biggest thing I've heard is like looking at these kind of events. Um, there's some people who want to say that like if everything has an explanation, then everything's going to be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the inverse, which is going to lead to like some sort of like modal collapse where there, is, there are no contingent facts because everything couldn't have been otherwise than the way it is. Like it just all had to be this way because everything has an explanation for its existence. Mm -hmm. um, those are two of the bigger ones. I mean, you could also do like conceivability. Like it's just possible. Like, you know, like the universe just began to exist. There's no reason for it. Like that's that. Close up shop. Um, so those are some of the bigger things I've heard. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would someone perhaps go around arguing against people who doubt the principle of sufficient reason? What are some responses that could be made? Yeah, so I think the, the best thing to do is kind of look at some explanations for, for like why I think the PSR is true, or the principle mm -hmm. of sufficient reason. So I think there's three really good ones. There's probably more. Um, one is that it's just like intuitively obvious. Like we just like in our everyday experience, we just look for explanations. Like it's not like if there's like a crime where we're just like, oh, things just happen. Um, like we look for explanation. Um, if you get slapped in the face, you're like, oh shoot. Like you look around and suddenly you're like, who slapped me in the face or like what hit me in the face? You're like, oh, sometimes just things just happen with no reason whatsoever. It's very intuitive that like things have explanations. I also think that like, this is kind of like a foundational part of modern science. Um, mm -hmm. like we look for explanations for things. We don't just like say like, Hey, uh, dark matter exists. That's it. Whatever. It's just, it, we are, we're like, why is it, why is it here? What does it do? Things like this. We look for explanations, um, and like things having explanations seem to be like fundamental to like modern science. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'm gonna say like, there's no known violations to the principle of sufficient reason. Mm -hmm. um, so like all that quantum stuff you might want to bring up. Well, I'm gonna say that doesn't actually like violate the principle of sufficient reason. Um, and since everything that we've encountered has an explanation for its existence. There's really good reason to think that like the PSR is true, in fact. So those are a few things I would do is try to raise some of the reasons for um, mm -hmm. to kind of push it. 